Hey there folks, Paul Markle with Student of the Gun, and today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite subject, the bug out bag, also known as the get home bag. Before we open up this bag and talk about what's in here or what we suggest for you to put in here, what we're going to do is we're going to address a very simple question. When you talk about bugging out or getting home, if you're going to have a bag, the main question is, where are you going? What do you mean, where am I going? Yeah, where exactly are you going? Uh, if your idea in the case of a crisis or an emergency is to just grab your backpack and run off into the woods, that's generally not a very good plan. Now, I'm not planning to grab this bag and run off to hide in the woods until things sort themselves out. But let us say that you're a prepared individual. You're a prepared individual and uh, you might need to help out someone, a friend, a relative, a neighbor, maybe not a neighbor necessarily, but uh, a close friend or a relative. Someone has a problem. They have flooding at their home, or there was a disaster or tornadoes, or they have no power, and they need your help, and they need you to help them right now. So you're going to grab your bag like this, and you're probably going to get in your truck, your SUV, maybe your car, and go to help them. So when I think of a bug out bag or a get home bag, I'm thinking of two types of bags, actually. There is the vehicle bag. When the vehicle bag, uh, regarding the vehicle bag, it doesn't really matter that it's heavy and it has a lot of stuff because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the handle or the straps and I'm gonna pick it up, carry it to a vehicle, drive to where I need to go, pick it up, carry it out of the vehicle and go to where I need to be. So this is the big bag, the B-B-O-B, -B, the big bug out bag. All right, so what is in a big bug out bag? Now, generally, I'm not worried too much about firearms or knives or flashlights or whatever, because when I walk out of the house, I have the fundamental four. I have something lethal, sharp, bright, and medical on me. But it's not a bad idea to take extra stuff with you, especially if it's a crisis or an emergency. So what I put on the outside right here is a separate pouch. It's got the red cross on it, as you see. So... That may, means, obviously, there's medical stuff in there. That's the universal symbol for medical stuff. So I open this thing up. I've got a spare tourniquet right here, a large uh, North American Rescue cat tourniquet. And then I have the Student of the Gun Combat Lifesaver pouch. Because this is a bag, I don't have to worry about this thing being super small or compact. So I've got the big one. I chose the big one. And this has a rat's tourniquet a pressure dressing, a Mylar space bag, a space bag, space blanket. It has a 14 gauge decompression needle, KV sponge, three feet of duct tape, an NPA hose, an, I mean, sorry, nose hose, uh, an extra large adhesive bandage, gauze roll, uh, non-latex gloves, and two sanitary wipes all in this one kit. And of course, you can get that from shopsotg.com. So I'm going to take some extra medical gear with me because I've got the room. It's not, the weight isn't an issue, so take extra medical gear. All right, let's talk about if I'm going to be, what's on the outside? Right here, I've got a carabiner. Uh, if you don't have these, you really should get one or two or a half a dozen or whatever. And I've got gloves. I'm a glove geek. I'm a firm believer in always having an extra set of gloves everywhere I go. Let's face it, if you're going to help somebody because they had a house fire or flooding or there was a tornado or a hurricane or disaster or riots, looting, whatever, you're probably going to have to move around debris and junk and lots of stuff and you want something to protect your hands. So I keep an extra set of gloves on the outside, easy to get to. If I'm going to be remaining overnight, I might have to sleep somewhere, and if it's an emergency situation, maybe I'm not going to be sleeping in a hotel, maybe I'm going to be sleeping anywhere that I can find a space to sleep. 
whether it's a floor, a couch, the back of a pickup truck, whatever. As a Marine infantryman, I slept in sand, jungle floor, forest floor, on cots, you know, everywhere. So what I've done, because it's a big bag and it doesn't have to be super compact, is I put a climate uh, sleeping bag. This is a 20 degree Celsius or Fahrenheit bag, good to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so it is relatively compact, but it is a sleeping bag. So there we go, I got a sleeping bag. What else? If there's inclement weather, we don't know if there's gonna be inclement weather or not, pack a poncho. I got this one, mill surplus store, but this was is a, this is a GI issue poncho. There you go. Get a good poncho. Not one of those cheapo crap things from Walmart. Get a good military spec, mill spec poncho. So there we go. I've got a poncho, got a sleeping bag. Now, if I'm gonna grab this bag and I'm gonna drive quick, fast, and in a hurry to get to my friends, my relatives, somebody who needs help, right? I don't wanna to have to worry about, let's say there was a hurricane or power outages or whatever, and the restaurants aren't open and what have you. I'm not gonna worry about that because I'm always gonna make sure that I don't walk out of my front door unless I have some food on me. Love them or hate them, MREs are fantastic for providing you calories. There's a lot of stuff in here. When I leave the house, I know at very least that I'm going to have some food on me. My first thought is it won't be, oh, I have to stop somewhere and buy food. If you're going to help somebody and you have a bug out bag or a get home bag or whatever, you don't want to be thinking, oh, I'm going to grab this bag, but on my way, I'm going to stop at fill in the blank. That should not be part of your plan. One MRE, I got food on me, boom. Water, I have a bottle of water. And you say, okay, pal, uh, you're gonna need more than one bottle of water. That much is true, but water is heavy and we're not gonna wanna take a lot of water with us. When we get to where we're going, when I get to where I'm going, there may be a water source. However, if there's been a hurricane, if there's been flooding, uh, what have you, if water mains have been broken and then repaired, the water may not be reliable or I might not want to just drink it. So what I have here, this is a Wayfarer and I've got the package. It is essentially a filter pump and I'll show you how it works real quick. Comes with this little bag right here. Do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. In the big part of the bag, you have a gray hose or siphon and that goes on the, obviously gray would go into the gray water, right? Gray water, water that may be questionable. A stream, a pond, maybe you're in a city and they've told you, hey, it's not safe to drink the water, but it'll come out of the tap. What do you do? Well, this Wayfarer, this handy dandy little pump right here from Lifesaver, uh, Lifesaver Wayfarer, uh, it's relatively uh, lightweight. I think this thing, this thing weighs like, uh, this lays 11 ounces. The whole thing weighs 11 ounces, so it's less than a pound. But I can filter, removes bacteria, cysts, viruses, reduces chemicals and heavy metals. And I can purify up to 5,000 liters or 1.320 thousand gallons of water. That's a lot of freaking water. Uh, so what you do is you would put the, the gray water hose on here, you drop that into your water source, and then there's a clean white hose, right, or a clear hose, and you put that here. And since I've got a water bottle with me, right, let's say I drink all this water, boom, 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 it's all gone, but now I have a container, I stick the hose in the container, that one goes in the water source, and I just pump and bingo, I've got clean, drinkable water wherever I happen to be. This is the uh, the Wayfarer, it's from Lifesaver, and coincidentally enough, you can get these at shopsotg.com. That's right, you can get that. So you'll never have to worry wherever I go about having drinkable water. And you say, well, I'll just take water with me. Yeah, you can do that, but dude, water's heavy. Water's heavier. Are you going to carry hundreds of pounds of water? 
I mean, how much does 1,000 gallons of water weigh? A lot, right? All right, so that I've got food covered, I've got water covered, I've got medical covered, I've got sleeping covered, I've got inclement weather covered, and then I've got, because, like I said, I don't need to worry about weight or space, what I've got here is I've got an inflatable sleep pad. Yes, indeed. Inflatable sleep pad, one of those camping sleep pads. I have an inflatable pillow, right? A little camping inflatable pillow. And uh, I've got a hammock. This hammock will support up to 300 pounds, and I am far less than 300 pounds, so I'm good to go. And if you've never slept in a hammock, uh, well, it's a lot better than sleeping on the ground. Uh, sleeping in a hammock is a lot better than sleeping on the ground. Again, uh, this is relatively lightweight, it's small, it's compact, fits in your pack, and uh, might, might be a good thing to have. 550 cord, always, there's never a reason not to have 550 cord. Does that make sense to you guys? 550 cord, it's not expensive, it's super handy. You'll find 101 uses for 550 cord when you need it, you need it and you'll wish you had it, so 550 cord. What else do I have in here? Aha! Well, I've got a shemag to, well, wipe my brow or whatever I need to do, make a little impromptu scarf. You should always have a shemag, super inexpensive, super handy thing to have. And, I'm pro and I've got an extra set of gloves in here. I told you I was a glove geek, so I've got an extra set of gloves in here. I've got a fixed blade knife. This is, unfortunately, they don't make these anymore. This is a cold steel survival edge knife, relatively inexpensive, super lightweight, uh, sharp enough. It's plenty sharp, it has a hollow handle. I keep tampons in there because tampons are fantastic tinder for fire starting. And this also has a fire starting stick right there. Like I said, I've reviewed these over the years. Unfortunately, they stopped making them, I don't know why. Uh, stupid on their part. But if you can find them, these are super handy to have. Like I said, very lightweight, but it's great to have a fixed blade knife. And what else do I have in here? Ah, when I bug out, uh, when I grab my bag and I jump in the car and I drive to where my friends need help, I'm probably going to have the clothes on my body. No problem. I'll think to grab a jacket on the way out. Generally, things that you think about. Uh, the clothes that I have on my body, I can wear for a few days, it'll be fine. But what I'm gonna wanna change is I'm gonna wanna change my socks for sure. So I've got extra wool socks in here. Yes, wool socks, not cotton socks. And I've got an extra cotton t-shirt to change out so I can swap out shirts uh, so that I don't get too funky or if my shirt gets sweaty because you guys know if you get sweaty and wet and you have a co wet cotton t-shirt laying against you all day long, it's going to chafe and you're going to be miserable and so on and so forth. I have a couple other things out here. My little mini, I've got a mini e-tool on the side that you may or may not want to grab that. And then in here, I've got myself a fleece beanie because you never know when it's going to get cold. These things are worth their weight in gold. They weigh almost nothing, uh, but let me tell you what. I stash these everywhere. I stash them in jacket pockets, in bags, and so on and so forth, because even if it's even if it's warm, if it's spring, or if it's fall, or maybe even summer, you know, summer, nighttime in the desert, even in the summer, uh, is cold. So there you go. And of course, if you've got a big enough bag, uh, you can put all kinds of miscellaneous other stuff on there. I've got some chem lights right there, just for fun. I've got a multi-tool on the outside. A Leatherman. This is the Leatherman. I don't know what it is. It's the one with the wire cutter and all that. It's a Leatherman makes really good tools. Uh, that always stays on the outside there. So yeah, this pack is relatively heavy. I probably at age 50 would not want to put this on my back and go hump, you know, five, 10 miles. But like I said, this is a bag that's going to be picked up, carried, thrown into a truck or an SUV or whatever, then pulled out and taken to where I need to go. So it doesn't really need to be super compact. And because it need, doesn't need to be compact, it's got a lot of really useful stuff in it. Oh, what else do I have in here? This is a got lots of, oh, this is a Blackhawk pack, by the way. I don't even know if they make this particular model anymore. Uh, in here, I have a solar 
It's got a solar charger. Actually, I have two solar chargers in here. And I've got all the little adapters. So if it's a power out situation and I've got my, my phone or my Walkman or my whatever, uh, I can charge it up, no problem. And I also have a headlamp, which is rechargeable. So I can recharge it with the, uh, the solar pack. So there you go. That's just a few things. Uh, you can add other things if you want. I've got some some fire starting sticks in here, some so the super light bulb matches and things like that. But there you go. Oh, and I should say that this conversation came about because I had a uh, I was talking on the phone with my friend Bill, and my friend Bill said I don't have a bug out bag. I don't have a bug out bag. And he said, what would you suggest? And I said, that's a fantastic question. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a video for my freaks, and I'm gonna talk about stuff that goes in this one. This is the big, the BBOB, the big bug out bag. And the next video we do, I'll do it a little after a little while, we'll talk about a lightweight or a smaller one that you're probably gonna be carrying on your back for extended periods of time. All right, there you go. The main question when it comes to bug out bag is where are you going? And what are you planning to do when you get there? That's going to dictate the stuff that you put into your bag. Answer that question and you'll be well equipped. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Paul Markle with Student of the Gun. Remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.